Hey y'all, welcome back. I wish I brought with me better tidings of great joy, but that's not the world we live in, sadly. So today I must unfortunately be the bearer of bad news. Pretty uh, cringe if you ask me. I am of course referring to the fact that Amazon got enough votes to beat the union effort in Besmer, Alabama. I'd been optimistic to see the results of the union vote, considering that it was the first time in decades our fucking shitty representatives started to put some effort behind and, and make some pretty out there statements about the need for unionizations and about the cruelty of anti-union policies. And seeing some of the organizing on the ground definitely had me feeling like it was in a hopeful position. You know, seeing all those celebrities out there and all that made to feel like, all right, may maybe things are changing for once. But as a wee little baby lefty, and I think this might apply to a number of my fellow babies in the audience, given the, <laughs> the age demographics that I see my channel gets, it's important to really sit with these losses. Looking at the results so far, of the 3,200 ballots cast, there were 1,800 opposing the union and about 750 in favor. There were 500 challenged ballots that would only have been tallied if they would have affected the election, but since the margin was over a thousand, that doesn't play into it at all. So essentially, as I'm sitting here today, the vote was a solid no. It is important to note that the fight is technically not over yet. Uh, the union wants to challenge the election results, given a few things we'll talk about in a minute here, about unfair uh, interfering with the process of the election and all that. But since we won't know for several months where that will all go, and again, the margin to beat is pretty sizable, it is sad but safe to assume that this means it's just not going to happen, at least not with this election. Obviously, they could re-rack the whole thing a few months down the line and maybe win. But as it stands right now, things are a solid loss. And since it would quite literally be the definition of insanity to assume that we could just rerun the simulation again and actually these numbers would flip this time, we'll be fine. It's important to sit and think about where do we go from here? And you know what? That's a really hard question to ask. As somebody who's new-ish to getting invested in politics, but still feels a deep emotional connection to a lot of these moments, there's been quite a few headlines as of late where I've just kind of sat there in a depressive state and just kind of felt debilitated by it. Like I remember when the results came in for the 2019 elections in the UK and it was clear that Labour just got fucking trounced. I just like went home from work that day and just like sat there. <laughs> like I didn't enjoy whatever hobbies I was up to. I'm sure my food arbitrarily tasted worse that night. It just like locked me in this really depressing state. And I think a lot of that comes from just being young and not really knowing how common these losses really are. Like it's really easy to get caught up in the Twitter trend and to feel like, oh boy, things are finally gonna be different this time. And then the reality on the ground hits and you realize just what you're up against. And for a while, when I was in a more kind of vulnerable, unaware state, that immediate loss was the end of it. It can feel totally helpless when you start to become aware of the structural elements keeping good things from happening. But I think if there's one single message that I want everyone watching this to take to heart, though this union vote was a loss, there's something to be taken away in how painfully desperate Amazon was. In years past, I'm sure businesses could ride the coattails of conservatives having convinced people that unions are these big, scary, bad people, and that they're really expensive and wasteful, and they wouldn't have to go in hard on some of these anti-union practices. But the energy was different this time, and it clearly made Amazon a little scared. Their efforts to stop the unionization run from the potentially criminal 
like getting a public utility to install a mailbox in a place that it was required to not be because it was easier for Amazon to intimidate the voters or to put their managers out there to constantly give their side of the story from that position to the, I don't know if it's technically legal, but definitely should be changing the traffic lights around the time that the unionization effort picked up. For anyone who's unaware about this part of the story, Union supporters would sit at the traffic lights outside of the warehouse, and when the cars were stopped, sometimes folks would go out and have a quick chat. So Amazon literally requested and got the request fulfilled to change the time of the traffic signals, and it just so happens that that means the organizers had less time to talk to people. Their efforts to union bust even go so far as maybe my favorite story all year, the very real, definitely not fake bot accounts that they spammed Twitter with to try to gain some public traction against unionization. Now, the other part of this that I don't believe the article brings up is the fact that Amazon had a very specific script for talking about anti-union policies on social media that they dispersed to folks who showed that they were sufficiently anti-union, which we could argue a, a certain level of shittiness, but this goes one step further to the point that they literally created fake accounts using the profile picture of internet celebrities to try to act like just a regular Joe here saying, I don't wanna have to pay dues every month. Like these fuckers are so desperate. They're scraping the absolute bottom of the barrel to try to make sure this union doesn't happen, which by the way, is when you know you're doing something right. And again, the few of these acts that are technically or bordering on illegal are going to be challenged by the union, but the takeaway from this should not be to cross our fingers and hope that they can win their court case. Rather, as Alex Press over here argues for Jacobin, we need to focus our efforts on fundamentally changing labor laws. Things are stacked so clearly in their favor. Like the fact that the larger company gets to decide on their own who at their workplace is eligible for a union, which in the case of Amazon means they tapped seasonal workers who have very little interest in the long-term benefits and are more so interested in the short-term benefits. Now, what do I mean by that? If you're a seasonal worker, you don't want to be paying dues or you don't want you, your availability to be fucked up because you're just there for a few months. So you don't care that the union will long-term benefit the full-time workers, but Amazon gets to be the arbiter of who does and doesn't count. And in this case, they broadened the tent of who would fall under a possible union, meaning that they were able to get a lot more votes against. On top of that, Amazon held mandatory sessions where the workers were just spewed anti-union BS. They would conveniently forget to mention things like about how unions on the whole increase wages above the rate that you pay for union dues. Or the fact that they got temp workers who couldn't vote for the union to be constantly wearing vote no merch and swag. Just think about it. That's such a fucking dystopian concept on its own. They're able to put posters all over their bathroom walls. They're able to hold mandatory meetings where they fill you with propaganda. All of that is either within their legal right or the fines for it are so minimal and historically unapplied that they feel no pressure to comply with the actual laws. And this is the inevitable end result that a bunch of people vote against their better interest. So moving forward, we absolutely have to focus on changing the structure of unionization in this country. Because in a case like this, even with what felt like a lot of good energy behind the union effort, there is so much that the company's able to do that the union can't really do in response, that the high amount of good will displayed wasn't in the end ever really gonna be enough. There are structural barriers to overcome that intentionally stack the deck in the favor of the businesses because of course there's more streamlined and profitable to to leave the workers without a voice but in a sense we might have a lucky moment here there is a bill called the pro act that the house of representatives passed recently 
which would make the intentionally shitty things that Amazon engaged in illegal. It, of course, doesn't outlaw bots or whatever, but I don't think that's a thing you could ever really legislate. But things like holding mandatory propaganda meetings or placing a mailbox outside the warehouse where managers can spew their propaganda would be illegal under the PRO Act. So, while I'm well aware of the constant and based and big-brained criticisms of electoralism, how limited it is, how we put too much trust in elected leaders and don't put enough effort into, into the organizing side of electoralism to pressure those elected members, we have an opportunity here. If the votes can be found for the PRO Act, the results of elections like the one in Alabama would reliably start to turn out different. And I feel like it's a bit lame to resort to the typical call your congressperson type beat. But if there were ever a moment to put pressure on elected representatives behind a single piece of legislation, it's the PRO Act. Whether that means ratioing senators on Twitter or calling your representatives if you happen to be in a state with a, a swing senator. Or maybe it means you attend a protest to demand the PRO Act at some sort of, you know, state capital or big city in your area. Or maybe it even means you provide financial support or, heaven forbid, even join in on some sort of a strike in a concentrated area or industry relevant to politicians in your state. You know, that might actually make them squirm for once. And this last part literally applies to zero of you in the audience, um, but I wouldn't be surprised if a quick way to impact change here would be if performer and or sports unions got in behind this. Like, could you imagine if the NFL Players Association refused to play if Congress didn't take up the PRO Act? Like, that would be monumental. Of course, it's never going to happen, but a boy can dream, okay? Let me have my moment. Now is the time to start demanding in whatever ways you can, preferably ways that make politicians feel, you know, actual pressure to represent us. And believe me, as somebody who is known to fall into his doomer roots, it's hard to even get the motivation to think about what to do next. Let alone like to actually go out and protest in the street or to contact a representative. So as scary and dangerous as it might seem, I want to go over and quote uh, the lovely Nathan J. Robinson, whose accent confuses me every time I hear him speak. Try to avoid getting discouraged by this loss. It is extremely difficult for the powerless to defeat the powerful. That's why they're called the powerful. Perhaps a bit of an obvious observation, but nonetheless, I think it's one that's important for us to take to heart. Speaking again as a baby lefty, it's really easy to feel like things are just gonna happen immediately because I've yet to be exposed to the decades of taking L's. But that is not reason to ever give up the fight because if anything, it's the moment to push even harder because now we understand the kind of stakes at hand. And if there were one single message to end on, it comes from this pro-union worker at the Besmer, Alabama warehouse. It's okay to feel depressed and frustrated. Those feelings let us know that there is something right going on. Let those feelings motivate you to stay strong and keep going. So on this major bummer of a day, let us all take the anti-doomer pledge. Instead of laying in my bed all night, consuming copious amounts of ice cream as I normally would on a sad day such as today, let's take this moment to regroup, strategize, and pressure for the necessary changes we need in this world. Anyway, thanks for watching everyone. Hope you got a crumb of motivation out of the video. That's all I'm really looking to do here. If you like the video, be sure to toss me a like and subscribe down below. But if you really want to support me, you can join me over on Patreon. Patrons get access to all sorts of exclusive content, like behind the scenes-ish, early versions of every single video essay, and exclusive videos, like this response segment on Cardi B and Dr. Seuss, or this patron exclusive Q&A video. So be sure to join me over on Patreon if you want access to all those exclusive goodies. Thanks much, everyone. And it is with a heavy heart that I say, I'll see you next time.